We're ready to um, map out the recesses for the apron. I've got the end square, everything squared off, ready to go. I'm gonna measure in nine inches from the ends, from these neat crisp square ends here. Make a mark. I square that line up. Same from this end, six inches, uh, nine inches in from the end. This needs to be accurate because when we square these lines across, this is what governs the leg to the apron ratio. It makes it that dead square. You want the legs dead square, it makes it accurate. I'm going to take the thickness of my bench top here like this. So I'm just flushing this with my finger here. I'm going to run this along the edge here. This is the top edge of my bench here. And this is the inside face of my apron. So I marry this one now. Once you've picked those outer faces, I've got inside face to inside face. I want to take this registration mark that I had here and transfer it onto the other apron, flush this here and make the mark on here. So you guaranteed the distance is exactly the same, same on this one, taking that mark. So the distances are guaranteed, they're exactly where they should be. Take this one out of the scene for now, square that one over later, and we're ready to start. We have to cut a wedge now to, uh, to get the exact sizing and the angle we need for the leg. So we're gonna put the leg on and then put the wedge against it. So I'm gonna cut the wedge now. This is my five eighth stock. So the length of my wedge, I'm gonna make it the same length as I've got here, which in this case is nine inches. Length of my wedge. And my wedge is one inch at the bottom and one and a half at the top. And cutting this, nope, that's not going to work. Slide this out of the way. I'm going to clamp it to the bench top. use this one I'm going to plane the edge get it nice and square and then I'm going to use this as a, as a pattern for all the other wedges this as square as you can. That's it. 
Now I bring the leg frame in. One of the leg frames. So you have to make some decisions in which way you want the leg frames to go. This one goes on here. Line it up with your knife wall on this outside face. Right on the knife. And then bring the wedge right up against the side. It just flush it at the bottom. And then take your knife right along this inside face. Like this. Do the same on the opposite one. That way you can clamp these and cut them both at once if you want to. Set your gauge to 5 eighths. I'm going to use the wedge because this is 5 eighths. This goes between those two points there. And now it's reg uh, recessing this. So we use a router, chisel, mallet. and clamp it to the bench top probably is the best thing. Just to make it nice and secure. Safe. White chisel, router at the ready. So here's just the standard procedure for a housing dado really. So that deepening of the knife wall with the chisel gives the recess, you can stand the chisel up in there and it gives a place for the bevel of the chisel so there's less compression on the wall when you do vertical chops. You just flick those out of the way. I'm just a little bit shy on my line here. So we're gonna chop here now. Don't hit too hard at this stage, just hit fairly positively, but don't, because there's not much wall of resistance for this yet. Just flick that out of the way. And keep going down. Now I can go much harder.
a little over halfway now. We've got a nice crisp wall, which I like. Just keep working down, get rid of the waste wood out of it, and chop again. We just keep going until we get down close to depth. on this wall now because I'm going to take that midsection out shortly. When you're chopping this way the, the bevel is driving the chisel face, the flat face, into the wall, so it's moving it into the wall. So you see how it tightens up everything and makes it very succinct, precise. So you can see I'm not actually trying to meet the wall either with the chisel cut that's going horizontally. Um, using it more as a splitter really. Very effective, really, this method. Let me move this a little bit. I'm going to come in here now and take out the waste. I reach a point where my bolster, the ferrule, this part of the chisel hits the stock at the end here, so I have to turn the chisel over like this. So I use the bevel down. I get less accuracy doing it this way. I have to micro, uh, micro adjust the distance, the angle, to make sure I'm getting the material where I want it out. I'm going to go across this end here now. This doesn't necessarily need to be perfect, just work to the line, but you'll be able to adjust this up and down when you glue this to the edge of the bench top.
Try not to go too deep. You want this face to sit squarely on the leg when you've done. Just like that. And now we can switch to the router just to get it even. So I've set this shallow, it's not the full depth yet. This is just on the edge there, so I'm pressing down with hard with my right hand. Imagine this in the, ah! can't believe I did that. Good lesson there. Oh, what a mess. So I'm going to have to sharpen up. It landed right on the very edge. So we'll have to watch for that. I'm going to keep taking this down now, a full turn, and use the router now. Which works similarly to the chisel, but gives me better access. You'll notice on my router that I have added the wooden sole, which gives me that extra expanse to go across the two surfaces so I can register this side and this side. Very good. I'm going to switch chisels. I just want to get this top edge down at the same rate. Don't worry about this blood here, I've got a splinter. But it didn't hurt and I didn't cry. Keep working it down, working it down. A little bit at a time. I think I'm going at about a sixteenth at a time here. bit of chiseling again the end here. come down here 
little bit deeper. Just to catch those fibers about the same rate that the rate that the router is cutting it. So I'm looking at the underside. This is very close to the full depth now. So even though I'm, I'm actually using it like a chisel, I'm still kind of angling the router as if I was pairing with a chisel, so I get the optimum cut. My brush is gone, there it is. So how close am I to the depth? One more pass does it, so that's... Wonderful. And set this to the final depth gauge mark. That's right in the groove. So I'm gonna go right along this side all the way to the top. This is the smoothing cut really, so this is, I'm angling the, the uh, router to pair cut across this final level. Get the bottom as smooth as I can. It's not really critical, but makes me feel better. That should be it. That's it. Now. clean out the corners and then we can see how we did very nice so the rev the uh, this will go in here like this you get this nice crisp square edge and then your wedge is in there just like that see it's already holding now we just have to bore the hole through and we anchor that to that with a bolt all the way through
So I've reconfigured this so I can prop it at one end. I've got my wedge in. It's forcing it against the square edge. There's one thing I do need to check, and that's the thickness of my bench top, which was two and three eighths when I left it last time, and it is now. So I need this to be just slightly over, and that's about a 30 second over, which is enough. So I'm going to clamp that for safety, stop it moving. I've got to bore a hole through here. You see, I'm going to put a bolt through here. I want this to be able to, I want to be able to dismantle this. So this will keep it tight at the bottom there. The wedge is in place. And I'm going to measure up one and one eighth from the bottom edge of the apron to bore the hole. I'm boring a three eighths hole because I'm using a three eighths bolt. So I'm coming up one and one eighth. And I'm going to center that in the leg. That's uh, one and what's half of that, so one and seven eighths. There. And here comes the boring bit. This bit should pull its way through. Just gone through the apron, now I'm going through the thicker part of the leg. This will help me, this will make the bench disassemblable. Uh, on some of my benches I've just used two or three screws through this face and plugged them and you can do that too if you've got a place where you can just have your bench more permanent. Kids love this, boring. This bit there it is. I'm just trying to pull the waist back out with the bit. There it is. And now I'm going to put pass the bolt through with the washer. That was perfect. Washer. And the bolt. Other than that, that's it. So we do four of those, the other three, and we good to put the bench top on things like that you feel it coming together so since that one up tight i've got the other three to do i'm ready to go get those completed and i'm ready to put my bench together